Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in the series of things you may have missed in The Witcher 3. I took a brief detour into Cyberpunk recently, but following the video about Yennefer's Ashes, I had an urge to come back to The Witcher 3, and here we are. Now, you probably know that I've already made plenty of these details videos, but chances are a handful of them have slipped past you over the years, and if that's the case, feel free to take a look at the full playlist down in the description. Alright, without further lollygagging, let's begin with number one, which I am fairly confident is a reference to the Sword of Destiny book, which you may not have noticed, or perhaps you simply did not make the connection. Remember how Imlarith chases Ciri as she escapes from the crones? There's no way she can outrun him, so she decides to hop on a tree and stay there until Imlarith gives up the search. This has got to be a nod to the time when little Ciri met Geralt and had her first adventure with him, in the Brokilon Forest. The two of them were escorted by a dryad, and as they set up camp for the night, Ciri asked Geralt to tell her a story. At first, he tried to avoid it by saying that he didn't really know any. And by the way, another reference to that moment is the part where Kira Metz teases Geralt how they never told them bedtime stories at Kaer Morhen. Treats. Of course. They didn't read you bedtime stories at Kaer Morhen. But anyway, back to the Brokilon Forest, he does end up telling a story, by which the Dryad is also quite fascinated, since... While she's relatively old, the Dryad, she's in her late teens, I believe, she isn't a natural Dryad, which means that all of the wholesome memories of her childhood were erased when she was converted. And um, it's a wonderful scene, really. This whole chapter is my favorite from the entire book, and um, Netflix removed it from the show. Anyway, the story Geralt tells is rather dry and with an abrupt ending, but it's about a tomcat who gets lost in a dark forest and runs into a fox. The fox interrogates him a bit and tells him about all the dangers of the forest and the hunters that prowl about. Then she proudly explains how skillful and cunning she is and how many tricks she possesses that can save her life. And she mocks the cat, because in response he only says that he can climb up a tree if needed. And as they are talking, suddenly the hunters ambush them, they set the hounds on them and before you know it, they catch the fox, despite all her supposed cunning. Meanwhile, the cat just climbs on top of the nearest tree and stays there. The hunters and their dogs bark for a while, but eventually they give up and go home. And so does the cat afterwards. I believe the whole scene here is a reference to that moment and the lesson Siri learned, which is great. Okay, moving on to number two, which is something incredibly small, related to a moment that perhaps Geralt would like to erase from his memory, and it's when they kicked him out of the bank in Blood and Wine. Bugger off, troublemaker! This can happen if you get a little aggressive in the vault, but then end up beaten by the dwarves. Master Witcher, your coin! You probably know that as a result you will be forced to exchange money at a slightly worse rate with this shady person near the bank. Do you need to swap currencies or perhaps a small loan at a reasonable rate? But a small detail you may not have noticed is the board to the left as soon as you enter. There are several drawings of people who are not to be served in this establishment. I'm afraid I can't identify them. But what I do know is that if you get kicked, a unique drawing of Geralt appears pinned on that same board. So in addition to a painting in the local brothel, you can have a portrait in the bank too. We will no longer serve you here. Please go. Okay, next up we have a curious piece of information and a bit of a restored dialogue involving Hjort. This is the druid who attempts to help Jarl Ulderic and stays with him the whole time. The one you seek, you will find. And then she will die. The latest, or one of the latest versions of the Brothers in Arms mod enables a bit more dialogue revolving around him with Ceres right after you rescue her from the cursed house. Folk have said Udelric's the chosen one. The one the gods speak to. I believed it once, but now... Considering certain things, I think he's just haunted. 
and it's his dead brother that's haunting him. And you have a theory about the voices, what they might actually be? I've asked around, here and there, visited our druids and Ard Skellig and Freya's priestesses on Hindersfjarl, and I've talked to Yort. This Hjort, who is he exactly? A druid. Been serving the Brockfar clan since Agnar, Udelric's granddad was Jarl. Da says he's the only reasonable man in the whole clan. Krach could be right. Seems Hjort gave you a good lead. I take it your suspicions were confirmed. Priestesses and druids wouldn't say much, but they agreed there's not much in the holy tomes about the gods commanding folk to hurt themselves. Yort was the one really got me thinking. He told me Udelrek started hearing voices right after Aki's death. Yort thought that important. So Hjort also doubts Udelrek's been chosen by the gods. He's loyal to the clan, so he'd never say openly. But he suggested that Udelrek's troubles likely come from Aki. So you believe Aki's getting his revenge, because Udelrek let him die? What's even more interesting is that apparently this is only a small indication of the larger role that the developers initially intended for this character. I had never heard about this before, but allegedly Hjort was supposed to be a kind of supernatural being and his involvement was meant to be much more significant. I do not have any clues as to why they changed it, Perhaps they did not wish for him to compete against Gontor or Dim, but apparently he was meant to be involved with the ending of the game somehow. Perhaps even with the worst ending, given that he prophesized it. Actually, and this is more of a personal speculation, but in the video where I talked about Ciri's grave, I mentioned the false Ciri and how she was initially part of the Skellige storyline, but was later replaced by Ceres. And given that Ceres' personal quest contains cut content related to Hjort, could it be that Hjort's original involvement also revolved around the false Ciri? Who knows, but I think it's a likely hypothesis. At any rate, tell me what you think of all this, and especially if you've heard anything more on the subject. I wish to thank the creators of the Brothers in Arms mod once again, and especially Mr. Glassfish for sharing all this information that I have about Hjord's original involvement. And now that I mentioned Glassfish, let's talk about Fishlung. You know, one of the divers from which you can get the information about the Sunstone. Did you know that there's an outcome of the scene with him where he can potentially get killed by drowners? There is this optional piece of dialogue about sensing them around, which pops up during the conversation. Risking a lot. Boy, that a threat or something? Don't need to worry about me, but I heard calls underwater. Monsters must have sensed blood. I don't hear nothing. Ordinary folk never hear these things till it's too late. We best get out of here, Matthias. If you go through it, Fishlung and his friends will leave in peace after finishing talking. We got nothing else for you, so if you're done, we'd rather get back up top. I'm done. And good idea. But if you skip it, you will get ambushed by the drowners towards the end of the dialogue. And if you're not fast enough, Fishlung and his friends can actually die. What you want to know? Druid mentioned some cavern you've never been able to enter. Where is it? East of Kertrold. In a cove you can only reach from the sea. But what you exactly... What was that? You hear that early? People! Murderer! Okay, next up is something I've been meaning to share with you for a long time, but I had honestly forgotten about it, and I was reminded of it by a viewer who asked me about something else. They asked whether it's possible to kill the wild dogs before meeting Mislav in White Orchard, and if so, how will that affect his quest? Well, it turns out that you can't. The dogs only spawn after you talk to him. But that is not the case with the Peller and his goat. You know how Princess will venture away into a bear's lair? Well, that bear can be killed earlier, and there is actually something curious about it. When you begin the quest, the bear will come out of its lair ready to meet the goat. Bear! Bear! Run, you stupid piece of shit! 
but before the quest has been started, you'll actually have to go inside if you wish to kill it. And if you have killed it, Geralt will have an extra line of dialogue about it. Should have guessed as much. What's a Witcher compared to a patch of wild strawberries? Come on, damn it. Where the hell'd you go? There, proud this area. Good thing I ran into him earlier. Do I really have to keep ringing this bell for you to follow? And speaking of goats and YouTube comments, I guess I should briefly address a small theory that tends to pop up from time to time. It's about the quest with Salma, the succubus in Novigrad. People have been speculating that the medic with the plague doctor mask is actually Hubert the vampire from the carnal sins, and that perhaps he was somehow involved with the killings. Find any claw or fang marks on the bodies? But upon closer inspection, while his hairstyle is identical and the clothing similar, it's not actually the same, and by glitching our way behind his mask, we see that his face is completely different. However, there's another small mystery that still puzzles me related to this quest. I've mentioned it once before, and it's the fact that Salma's name is written on the wall of the creepy occult house in White Orchard. Speaking of White Orchard and potentially promiscuous women, let's end the video by talking about something that I'm most likely wrong about, but I would like to bring up anyway. So, when making one of my later Details Missed videos, where I talked about finding the body of the person that Yennefer knocked into a ditch, I was looking around the road from the Nilfgaardian garrison to Vizima. By the way, Vizima is actually visible, uh, no pun intended, in the distance. There are these very low-res buildings, similar to Tirnalia. Beautiful. I'm glad to know you appreciate it. Elven architecture is a bit more sophisticated than yours. But the point is, I noticed a brief exchange along the road between a traveler who's headed to Vizima and a local woman. She basically warns him of the dangers of the road, but is also rather quick to offer him a place to stay at her home until the situation has been resolved. Good woman, is this the road to Vizima? To your grave, more like. Have you not heard about the griffin? First the black ones, now a griffin. I guess it's true, misery does love company. As should travellers. Leave the village alone and the beast will sniff you out and eat you up sure as morn. You best wait till the group gathers. At the inn, if you've gold. If not, I'll put you up myself. I don't like you, white one. And then I realized that this is the same woman who is seen earlier when you arrive at White Orchard spreading rumors about Elsa being Nilfgaard's whore and whatnot. I knows what I knows. Elsa bears her rump for the Blackens. Little whore. I don't like you, white one. So I thought, how hypocritical of her. But upon further investigation, I think it's just a case of reused models, because as soon as you see her talking to that man, there's a woman who looks exactly like her, working at the house very close to where the initial woman was seen, spreading the rumors about Elsa. So I'm not sure if this is supposed to be the same person after all, but if you have any thoughts on the matter, I'd be happy to hear them. And with that, I believe we're done for now. I'd like to thank you very much for watching, especially to my supporters and YouTube members, and until the next video, stay tuned and be good. <laughs>